Good news, in this video I'll be sharing 4 NFL picks for week 16. And I'm also bringing back my famous free prediction contest where you could win $100. Stick until the end for all the details. Could you be the one beating the competition? We crushed the NFL bets again last week. Indeed, the picks on sides and totals generated a 6 and 1 record, which raised our season record to 46 wins, 33 losses, and 3 ties. That corresponds to a 58% winning rate. And do we need to mention our habitual success on prop bets? I have now shared exactly 100 plays of that type, and we have killed it with a 60 40 record. Boy, are we crushing the NFL or what? Thanks for being a bookie crusher, my friend. Alright, let's get down to business. Pick number one in the NFL for week 16 is the Green Bay Packers team total to go over 20 and a half points. They will be facing the Panthers at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Let me review some of the arguments that led directly to this betting tip. First of all, Carolina's top cornerback, Dante Jackson, is on the wrong side of questionable. All signs point towards him missing the game, which would be a huge boost for Jordan Love and company. With the Panthers being out of playoff contention, there is no reason to rush him back into action. Jordan Love and the whole offense have taken a step forward in their progress in recent weeks. During the past 5 weeks, they have exceeded 20 and a half points scored on every occasion, except last week where they missed that mark by half a point. The Packers have the youngest offense in the entire league, so it's no surprise that they have improved substantially as the season went on. I also like this bet because Green Bay is facing a very weak offense. In fact, the Panthers have scored the 4th fewest points in the NFL this season. Why does it matter? Because that means they don't sustain long drives. Carolina tends to make 3 to 6 plays on offense before giving it back to their opponents after a punt or a turnover. That will give the Packers more opportunity to put points on the board. To top it all off, I believe Green Bay's defense will be fired up after a poor showing against the Bucks. In that game, the defense was torched for 452 total yards in front of their home crowd. They will be playing with a chip on their shoulder and facing Bryce Young is a good way to make amends. We are finally likely to have both Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon in the backfield for the Packers. Both seem a little banged up, but they should be on the field this Sunday. As far as the wide receivers are concerned, Christian Watson and speedster Jaden Reed may or may not suit up for this game. Based on the latest reports, I think Reed will be there, but not Watson. However, it was reassuring seeing Dontavian Wicks making solid grabs and being more involved in the offense last week. Green Bay is in must-win mode, while I'm not sure the Panthers will have a high level of motivation. They are coming off an emotional 9-7 victory over their divisional rivals from Atlanta. That was their mini Super Bowl, so I believe they could have a drop in their energy level. Give me the Packers to put at least 21 points on the board in Carolina this week. <laughs> My second NFL pick this week is under 44 points to be scored in the Cardinals vs Bears meeting. As of midweek, some sports books currently have the total set at 43 and a half, which is also good to me. If you focus on Arizona's road games only, 6 of 7 games ended with a total below 44. Now, if you switch your attention to Chicago's matches played at Soldier Field, you will find out that 4 out of 6 games ended with less than 44 points on the board. 
so if you combine both together, you end up with a 10-3 record favoring the under. Both clubs rank in the bottom half in terms of their passing offense. Meanwhile, they are both in the top 10 regarding rushing yards per game. To me, that's a sign we could see a lot of plays on the ground, which tends to milk the clock. We also have two running quarterbacks facing each other, so all signs point toward a good proportion of plays being on the ground. Moreover, Chicago is called the Windy City for a reason. That could make throwing the ball more difficult, which is also good for the under to hit. For all of these reasons, I am grabbing the under in this NFC battle. The upcoming picks are called leans, because for now, I don't like them enough to bet. I am likely to add more official picks for those of you who signed up at mgpicks.com. Lean number one goes to the Dallas Cowboys as one and a half point underdogs in Miami. I do believe the Cowboys will bounce back after such an embarrassing 31-10 loss in Buffalo. Meanwhile, the Dolphins picked up an easy 30-0 victory over the Jets. To me, this is a good spot for Dallas. Some will argue that the Cowboys have not beaten many good teams, but they still demolish the Eagles, while also getting the W against the Rams and the Seahawks, who are very decent teams. The situation is much worse on Miami's side. The best team they have beaten is Denver, who is sitting with a 7-7 record. The only three times they faced a team with a winning record, they lost by a margin of 28, 14 and 7 points. Ouch! Another good point favoring the Cowboys is the fact that Miami currently has four offensive linemen listed as questionable. Who will play and who won't? It's hard to tell right now, but having a depleted offensive line when you are about to face Dallas's fierce pass rush is extremely bad news. There are a couple of things that make me worry though, which explains why this is not an official pick. First, the Dolphins will be well rested since they will be at home for the third straight week. Moreover, Miami has played solid football at home as evidenced by their 6-1 record in front of their home crowd. On the other side, the Cowboys have not proven to be road warriors, since they hold a disappointing 3-4 record in that situation. I am also tempted to go with the Bengals minus 2 points in Pittsburgh. Cincinnati has scored an average of 31.7 points over the past 3 games, with Jake Browning under center. He simply operates in a better system that suits his strengths very well. Meanwhile, since firing Matt Canada, Pittsburgh's offense has scored 16, 10, 18 and 13 points. That's awful! It looks like Canada was not the only problem after all. The Steelers will start Mason Rudolph for this critical game. He has not started a game in more than two years, so that seems like a risky move. One element that entices me to bet the Bengals is the fact that they will be looking to avenge a 16-10 defeat against those same Steelers four weeks ago. Star wide receiver Jamar Chase has been ruled out though. That's a big source of concern since he is such a key piece of this offense. Still, if forced to bet, I would go with Cincinnati here, but as of now, I have not pulled the trigger. Hey man, show us your NFL prediction skills by entering my free NFL prediction contest. Simply make a pick against the spread on all 13 games that will take place Sunday and Monday, while also grading each pick with a rating from 1 to 13. The person that accumulates the most points will bring home a $100 cash prize. 
The only way to enter is by going at mjpix.com and creating an account there, if you have not done it already. It's all free, so why not give it a shot? You could end up being the prediction beast. I'm Professor MJ, holder of a PhD in statistics. Merry Christmas everyone!